Um, I thought I would um, show a video on uh, a notebook project that I learned how to make um, when I went to the quilt show. I have a video for that in my channel if you want to check it out. Um, it's a technique where you use uh, paper foundation piecing to piece strips of fabric together. Um, there's a company called Itty Bitty Pieces and um, she sells a lot of different patterns and she was at the quilt show a couple years ago and then I found some hand dyed fabric um, from another company. It sort of has a southwestern flavor to it. These aren't my favorite colors but um, I just felt guilty that I bought it and hadn't used it so <laughs> I finally decided to do it and basically um, it's just no different than um, you know a mini album. It's like a, a very common mini album technique. So it just uses um, a basic um, um, you know, notebook and so um, I take these to work with me because my cubicle is all gray and the colors and the paint and, and everything just looks so tacky and shabby and I have to put some color in my life so um, I just kind of thought I would show you. It kind of makes it feel a little uh, more interesting than just a plain um, you know, legal notepads and stuff to write in when you go to meetings and things like that. And I, the other thing is I try to st stick to sort of more conservative colors so it doesn't show, show up, up, you know, stand out too much if it's something I'm going to take to work. Um, so, um, anyways, I also wanted to show you that um, I, I collect patterns and I was going to show you some of, um, some patterns from my pattern collection where you can do, um, you know, these types of journals trying to get this into the camera frame and I really love this one because and I'm hoping it'll just give you some inspiration um, the reason why I kinda got inspired to show these to you is Marion Smith had just done a mini album tutorial on how to make a mini album using um, muslin um, and uh, quilting batting um, covered over chipboard and I immediately remembered this uh, pattern in my pattern collection that I had gotten from a book or a magazine I can't remember so it's just basically the same strategy. You just make a slip cover for whatever album or book you're covering. And um, I just love the Muslim with the red. Um, and I don't know, it seems like that's kind of a classic French um, thing that I see in Marie Claire um, Ideas Magazine quite a bit. So I've been thinking, um, if you're like me and you own the um, laminating machine from Cricut, where you can bind those pre-made album covers. Um, one thing I was thinking this would be perfect for is a, a way to create a slip cover for, for an album that you make with those albums that come, come with that um, binding and laminating machine. So I haven't had the time or the ability to actually do it, but I just thought I'd show this to you for design and for inspiration. And then if I do make one, I'll definitely post a video on it. Um, here's another... Um, project and um, this is um, very similar just a way to cover like an artist sketchbook um, and um, so um, if you have some um, fabric that you really love that's left over from a quilting project or a sewing project or whatever it's a great way to use up scraps and I actually have um, well I thought I had the name of the book so I'm sorry I don't know like I don't recall what book this came from but there's a lot of uh, patterns out there for these kinds of journals. Um, the last one, um, journal covers, the last one, the pattern came from a book called Stitched in Time. And then here's one that came from a magazine that I really, really love. I hope you can see it okay in the video. Um, let's bring it up to the camera closer. Basically, um, somebody just rescued an old beat up quilt from an antique store and took out the pieces that were left in the quilt that were really good and turned it into an album cover and I love this. I just one of my all time favorites. I've wanted to make some I don't know how you know that it's it's been washed and worn and it's soft and aged and just something that you can't get from something that's brand new. I absolutely love that. And here's an here's another one that I wanted to show you guys. Again, stuff I've got, got in my pattern collection that I've never gotten around to making but thought I would show you just for some design inspiration. Um, this one was made um, using um, English uh, paper piecing with these hexagon pieces um, and another great way to cover um, a journal or if you wanted to use it to cover your mini album um, using fabric 
instead of chipboard. I, I just love this. And then finally, um, this you can get right offline, this pattern here. It's from um, Moda Bake Shop, and it's um, a great recipe for making a fabric scrapbook. And I'll try to take it out of the plastic so there's less glare. Um, it's just called Eva Fabric Scrapbook by Melissa Mortensen. So if you go to Moda um, Bake Shop website, um, the full instructions can be downloaded. But the technique was very, very similar to what Marion had done except the pages are very big and no um, chipboard cover um, but you can see the whole thing is bound with grommets and um, book binding rings and um, I'll just turn it to the first page so you can get a sense for how she made this she printed off her photos in printable fabric paper and embellished it with fabric flowers and um, I just love it, I, it's just so soft and um, quick and easy. Um, her edges are finished off with a pinking sheer type zigzag cut and I'd love to give this a try. I've got a lot of photos that I've already printed out that I've kept tucked away and haven't had a chance to use them so I've definitely got this on my list of to do things that I'd like to do. Um, Marion really really inspired me. And then the other thing since um, people, you know, when you, for scrapbookers <coughs> who are <coughs> interested in crossing over into using their sewing machines, because I know it's really popular now to use your sewing machine and sort of do mixed media things. Um, this is a great way um, to take your photo um, photos and um, turn it into a pillow cushion and I also just love this idea where you just print out your photo on a printable um, fabric and um, just, um, you know, if you can put a few panels on it um, just put two sides, another size for the pillow top, right side with right sides facing, sew around it, stuff it, and then you can just um, stitch um, the opening closed. Here is the fastest and easiest way to do. I'm sure most people know how to make a pillow, um, but this also this pattern also came from a book called Stitched in Time. And um, the last thing I thought I'd show you is um, something that I've been wanting to make for a long time, which I finally finally got around to making. Um, sorry for the glare. Um, this came from a book um, that I'll put uh, the title to below the video, but um, I love these doily earrings, and I know doilies are also really popular right now in mini albums, and it just looks so gorgeous on this model. <laughs> and it's just like, you know how sometimes you think, I don't want to look like a dork wearing, you know, crocheted earrings, right? I'm the kind of person where I go to work and it's not something you see every day, so I would definitely be, you know, outside my comfort zone wearing them to work. But I made a pair and I wore them um, yesterday, and they were incredibly comfortable. I, they're the lightest earrings in the world. You can barely tell you have them on. I don't know if you can see that, but um, you just you just make the crochet uh, doily with size 10 crochet yarn. Um, it takes all of five minutes to make one, and so here's the. Which, if you believe, if you can believe it, I made this one about eight months ago and <laughs> sat in my knitting bag all that time. And then here's the second one. And um, it was rainy yesterday, so um, as the day wore on, I had to go to a bunch of doctor's appointments, and I was in and out of the rain. They started curling up on me, so I don't know if you'd want to stiffen that up. Um, with, with some kind of stiffener, but um, people definitely notice them. <laughs> um, I, I don't know if they like them or not, but I was happy.